Thank you. Hallelujah. So God has done it. Thank you, Jesus. Now you need to ask yourself, are you really the person God wants you to be? Ask yourself, am I the person God wants me to be? That is a question we need to ask. This is what I'm going to talk about today. One can be very rich and yet not what God wants him to be. Because the reward of the person of God is the genuine peace of heart. And the legacy for generations. Legacy leads for what? Generation. Can you see the two things? Genuine war. The genuine peace of heart. And the legacy to live for generations. One can be a prophet and yet not the person God wants him to be. One can be a president of a nation yet not what God wants him to be. One can be the richest person in the world, yet not what God wants him to be. Think about it. How can somebody be the richest in the world, and yet not what God wants him to be? Because he or she lacks the genuine peace of war. And such words cannot live for generations. The same thing, you can be a prophet, you can be a bishop, and yet not what God wants you to be. Hallelujah. So the question you need to ask is, are you really the person God wants you to be? How do we know what God wants us to be? The answer has been given. The first step to know our destiny, what God wants you to be, is to get to know God better. We talk about that today. To get to know who? Better. We are not talking of religious conduct and behaviors. Where we all actually come in from. Tell your neighbor, you need to know God better. You need to get to know God better. We Christians today, we claim we know God by confessing faith in the Word. By confessing faith in the Word and denying it in action. You say, I know God. God is, I mean, born again, Christian, this, 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 this. We confess it in the way, but deny it in action. This is why we need to know God better to discover yourself. You are what God says you are, but you don't know. You can do what God says you can do, but you don't know. You have what God says you have, but you don't know. If you know, you have what God says you are, and you can do what God says you can do. Oh my God. Sky will be your limit. You will not compare yourself to others. You will be content.
confessing faith in the way, denying it in action, trying to believe, yet never acting on the word. Oh, I believe Jesus is Lord, Jesus is this, this is that. I'm just telling you your lifestyle, the kind of Christian you are. This is why I say you need to know God better. I'm just telling you. I'm just describing the kind of person you are. Trying to believe. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yet, never attain on the word. That is the kind of Christian you are. Sense, knowledge, believers. You have to see in order to believe. No, what are you telling me? Mm, what? You must see in order to believe. You have to see in order to believe. You cannot believe beyond what your senses register. You cannot believe beyond. Let's look at one gentleman in the Bible here. The book of John 20, verse 24. It said, Now Thomas, one of twelve disciples, was not with the disciple when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where nails were. Listen to that. And put my hand into his side, I would not believe. This is sense ruled Thomas. A man like us. You have to see in order to believe. We cannot believe beyond what our senses register. This is the kind of Christian we are. Our daily battle is with our senses. With our senses, we fight the people we see. And our weapon of warfare is not carnal. Our armor is divine. We fight the people we see. Somebody calls you, mm, you believe you want to fight. You fight your sister, you fight your brother, you preach against your brother, you preach against me. We react to the things we say. The Bible says we cannot know the things that are freely given to us of the Father until we are recreated. The book of Luke 10, verse 20. What does he say? He said, don't rejoice. Because the Spirit submits to you. Rejoice. Because your name is written in the book of life. Today we, 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 we are pastors. We are prophets, we are evangelists, just because we dream and it come to pass. We are pastors, evangelists, we are prophets, just because we prophesy, it come to pass. We 
we are pastor, we are evangelist, we are bishop. Just because we pray, things happen. The spirit may convict us, may speak through us, may operate in us, but he cannot make his home in us unless we are recreated. There's a lot, we are, a lot of pastors, bishop, prophet everywhere, bishop, prophet, it's just dream and it comes to pass. Prophesy, it will rain tomorrow and suddenly it rain. Ah, you people will come together to build the church for him because the prophecy has come to pass. That is your assessment today. So many of us here become a Christian today because you, you speak the result come. You dream and you say your dream and it come to pass. Oh, that make you a Christian. What is the way out? That is the question for you and I. Because already you have to agree with me that you are a sense knowledge believer. Tell your neighbor, you are a sense knowledge believer. I can hear you. And to know God better is to know your what? Your calling. And is to know your spiritual gifts. What is the way out? The principal source of finding ourselves recreated is the Bible. There is no substitute for it. Tell your neighbor, this principal source of finding ourselves recreated is the Bible. There is no substitute for it. If there is no substitute for it, how do we get the Bible into our heart, the word of God? But don't forget, the Bible is given by the inspiration of God. You can read Bible hundred times, million times, as long as you hold grudges, as long as you hold unforgiveness, as long as you have all bitterness, envy, jealousy, hatred, it makes no meaning. The Bible is given by what? Inspiration of God. Only men were carried along by the Spirit. You can read the Bible hundred thousand times as long as you hold grudge, as long as you have all unforgiveness, bitterness, envy, jealousy, hatred, just name them. It makes no meaning. It is as if you are reading history. Reading history is reading about events. That is where your problem comes from. Tell your neighbor, this is where my problem comes from. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Face your neighbor, say, this is our problem. This is just, mm, this is your problem. You take Bible when you are not happy. You take Bible when you are very upset. You take Bible when you are hurt. You take Bible when you are facing challenges, situation. You are disturbed. No, you need free spirit to read Bible. That is 
just your problem. You don't have any other problem to get the weather girl. You cannot get it. You have plenty of Bible in your shelf, in your library, but they are not in your heart. They are here. Sense. In order to read your Bible effectively, I suggest reading the Bible aloud. A L O U D. Aloud. Particularly the New Testament. Say the scripture to yourself. Say the word to yourself. Incite your name, your own name, where the message is personal. And because I want you to be spiritual. That is, we are only made spiritual by living in the world, you, by living in the world, and by the world, living in us. That's all. So, I don't know how you work with the law, because the Bible says possessing a, 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 a spiritual gift is an important part of our working with the law. Because you can't work with the law. How can you work with spirit, spirit when you are not spirit? How can you work? God is spirit and his worshiper must worship him in spirit and truth. Look, this is the spirit. And I'm here with body. And I'm, uh, Is it possible for me to work with the spirit? It's not possible. You have to be spiritual. Possessing a spiritual gift it's an important part of our working with the Lord. You have to be spiritual to work with the Lord. You have to be spiritual. You can be a prophet, a pastor, a bishop, and yet not be what God wants you to be. You can be a president of a country, yet not. So, and I told you the reward of being the person of God, the reward, the genuine war, peace of heart, the legacy, to live for generations. Right now, if today is your last day on earth, what do you think can live in you for generations? What we have now is too controversy. Fight, disagreement. No, this one is mine. This one is mine. That is debt in the bank. We are rich, but very, I mean, we know debt so much. Everything we have enveloped by controversies. So please think about that. It's very, very important. Your calling and your spiritual gift are one. If you say, what is my calling? You are saying, what is my spiritual gift? That is what you are asking. So, hallelujah. What message are you taking home today? Am I really the person? Again? Again, it's very important to discover yourself. What I'm talking about is our destiny. If I'm not operate on my destiny, if I'm not given the spiritual gift to operate, what I've been going through in the past is enough to send me part. Look at the apostle in the Bible. I look at the trial and temptation they went through. And I now begin to compare myself to, I see that, uh, ah, history will tell about my trial and, and, and persecution. The most persecuted pastor, not only that, there's nothing I have not gone through in this country.
So there is need for you to know your calling. If you don't know your calling and you are operating, whatever you become, it does not take these people a second to bring you down. Your calling is your gift, spiritual gift. And the beginner is not the owner, but the finisher. Right now, let us submit to the Spirit of God and welcome him in your heart. Welcome him. Welcome him. Welcome him. Welcome him. Welcome him. Father, we thank you. We thank you. I release you from the pain of the past. Yeah. Be released from the pain of the past. Pain of the past are the cause of unforgiveness. Are the cause of bitterness. Cause of envy, jealousies. Cause of hatred. Be released in the name of Jesus. Yes. Think about that. Anything that are not glorify God, forget about it. Put it behind you. Be released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Be released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say to yourself, I'm released. Je suis libéré. Believe that, believe that, believe that. Créalo, soy I can hear you. Oui, soy libre. Whatever Satan must have used, you know, Satan can use unforgiveness to connect you to himself. This is a weapon. They are weapon of Satan. Unforgiveness, bitterness, envy, jealousy, jealousy, hatred. These are the weapons Satan used. This is why I say, look, don't hold offense. Satan use offense to connect us. To himself. So you say, ah, how can Satan connect me? Yeah, through unforgiveness. If you say, I will not forgive uh, what this man has done to me, it's too bad. He cheated me. Whether you are right or wrong, you are not supposed to hold offense. That offense, Satan you to connect, he used that offense to connect us. That offense is a chain of Satan. This is why you have to. You have to right now work on that. Work on your life. That's why when I say whatever Satan must have used. What are the things Satan used? Unforgiveness, hatred, envy, jealousy, pain of the past. He used those things to connect us to himself. I can see them being broken. <laughs> Being broken. Be broken. Tell your neighbor, I can read my Bible and understand it. I can hear you. I, I can read my Bible and what? Yes, and understand it. With unforgiveness, it makes no meaning. It is as if you are reading history, reading literature. They did just, uh, I mean, chemistry, book. This is just it. This is just it. It offends. Listen to me. I'm not praying for you. I'm just telling you what is happening right now. I can see them being broken. The chain has been broken. Agree, 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 agree. Rejoice. Confess this. Confess your freedom now. Chain. Has been broken. Chain of affliction has been broken. Chain of setback has been broken. Chain of isolation has been broken. Chain of career failure has been broken. Has been broken. Has been broken. Has been broken. Open your lips and confess the freedom. Confess your liberty. Confess your liberty. 
Les chaînes de la friction, les chaînes de l'échec de la carrière, de l'idolâtrie ont été brisées. Confessez votre liberté. Confessez votre liberté. In Jesus' name. The question now, who is my enemy? What, that is a question you need to ask yourself. Unforgiveness. Envy. These are your enemies. Bitterness. Hatred. Jealousy. Pain towards others. These are your enemies. If you have nightmare, you wake up, ask yourself, ah, I, I, I have a forgiveness. That is why this is a nightmare. I have a, hey, hatred, envy. That brother have not yet forgiven the brother. That is why I'm having a nightmare. Because this is the chain. This is the connection to Satan. Satan has no root to get you. But he used root of unforgiveness, envy, jealousy, Please, 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 talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Talk to yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let us pray for our nation, your nation, whatever you have, as a contact point. Go intervention. Go intervention. Go intervention. God intervention. Right now, cover your nation with the blood of Jesus. Cover your nation with the blood of Jesus. 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 I can hear you. Again and again. In Jesus Christ's name. Nom de Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Pray for your leader. Pray for your leader. Ask God to redeem your leader. Redeem my leader. Give them a hearing heart. A hearing heart. A hearing heart. Redeem my leader. Go intervention. In Jesus Christ's name. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Right now, your journey back. Now, you will start the righteous journey. Righteous journey. Upright journey. Ask God to strengthen you. Ask God to strengthen you. It's not yet over until. Ask God to strengthen you. Strengthen me, Lord. I need your grace. I need your grace. I need your grace. I need your grace not to have unforgiveness. I need your grace not to have a grudge. Bitterness, envy, I need your grace. Give me your grace, Lord. Not to have of unforgiveness, grudge, bitterness, envy, jealousy. I need your grace. In Jesus Christ's name. I need your grace to forgive. Open your lips. I need your grace to forgive. Prayer. I need your grace to forgive. I need your grace to forgive and forget. In Jesus Christ's name. Listen to me. This is the voice of God. Now, new beginning to you. The way out for you has come. The way out for you has come. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Repeat it, repeat it. The way out for me has come. The way out for me has come. The way out for me has come. In Jesus' name. I can hear you. Thank you. 
this coming Friday, Manet TV will be 13 years old. Okay, since we are not going to see you, can you rise up and let us wish Manet TV happy birthday? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Happy birthday to who? Beep, beep, beep. We are going to call the cake in spirit now. There's a giant cake here. Are you with me? Yeah. At the count of who? <laughs> At the count of Jesus. J E S U S. Are you sure you call the cake? Stretch your hand in the spirit. At the count of who? Jesus. J E S U S. What shall we say unto the Lord? All we are to say, thank you. If not the money TV, you will have printed me black today. But I thank God. Money TV came to rescue me. The money TV came to, to rescue me. If not, the money TV, what will I say today? So now the story has now become. Don't tell me I have I've seen it. I watch live. No, I have seen it. I've watched live. I'm watching. So that is a money TV for you. So you, you can imagine the kind of uh, the spirit being we are we are celebrating. Thank you, money TV. <laughs>